Sorry, I wasn't thinking. Yeah. All right, we're recording, yes? Yes, yep, I heard it. All right. So I'm going to steal this from you. Great. So I'm just going to... I'm just going to go back and say what I said. Okay. So what we first started talking about was how to set up the slide deck from the first place. I had discussed uh, simplicity of background is mm -hmm. something that I like. It just requires less formatting and less contrasting when I add images, et cetera, and uh, particular fonts. I don't have to go worrying about the contrast of the font versus the background. We also spoke about the mass going to slide master and you can have multiple slide decks of templates. So in this one, for instance, I have my slide deck master where I have uh, have a white background. My Cambria font is the one that I so choose. Uh, I find it for whatever reason, visually appealing and easy to read. And then my themes, I like colors. And so I use uh, a primary and secondary color palette that will uh, allow me to manipulate that and cross it over across slides. Within the slide master, again, you can uh, also manipulate headers and footers um, if you so choose. Within this same uh, slide master, like so there's like another slide deck as well, which is the APTA one. So that when I insert a slide from the uh, like when I'm actually in the sl uh, slideshow itself, I can do so from here. Um, and so that is one way where you can, instead of going through all my slides, changing the fonts, changing the color scheme, you can uh, very quickly manipulate it from the uh, slide master view. Okay, and then how that manifests when you're actually in your slide deck, you would go to like insert a new slide. You can see that I can do the office theme, which is my theme. I can also do the APTA template. And depending on the said slide, I would, for instance, like these first couple are gonna be APTA. And then I'm gonna slowly transition into my office theme, which would be these slides. Here. Uh, and the, the overarching conversation that we're having is how do we set up our slide deck in an efficient and an effective manner that is uh, quote unquote visually appealing. And so that would be one strategy in particular. Um, and I'm also big on like visuals uh, as far as like not only media, but also uh, uh, when I say media, I'm talking picture and image uh, and video. And so this would be an example of uh, how you can make what was traditional uh, a little bit more bland, a little bit more engaging. Um, and so that is, those are the primary principles when we're talking on a macro scale of just setting things up. Uh, when we get a little bit more granular, some uh, basic rules of thumb that, uh, to be frank, at times I have, uh, yeah, I have uh, gone against and broken these rules of thumb at times. Um, but a good rule of thumb was, would be, the, I think I would call it like the six by six um, rule. So like no more than six bullet points and trying to mitigate the number of words down to six for each bullet point. And then the ideal font, the smallest font on a particular slide for content that people actually want to consume would be 18. Um, that is, uh, you will see that these slides, right? The font here is much smaller than that. It's like 16. But uh, again, uh, choose wisely when you deviate from the, the 18 and make it strategic. Uh, other things that, uh, uh, that we had started to talk about is like road mapping. And so that our audience does not get lost within the slide show. Oh no. Mike, okay. Mike, okay. Yeah, um, I don't quite know what happened, but my entire screen just went black. Huh, that was really weird. I don't yeah. know what it did. Okay. I can still see you and your screen, by the way. Um, hmm. Okay, yeah, it went, it went all black, and then, well, now it's back again. Um, okay, I'm going to continue. Uh, that was really odd. Um, okay, so 
um, yeah, road mapping. So when we're trying, we just don't want the audience to be lost with, within the presentation. And so a couple of ways that I do that is by consistently coming back to like a session outline. Um, within that session outline, I will like highlight where we're at, um, often using uh, effects. So I will I like use this. the, anim I will use the animation and I will, uh, you can either use a uh, bold reveal or brush color. So in this case, my brush color would be, I don't know, red stands out so that when we actually preview the slide, it would look like that. Um, and so that would be one example of how you could have a session outline, orient them to it, and then uh, repeat that slide outline yeah. through, uh, throughout the presentation. Secondarily to that, uh, I will also uh, create section uh, header slides such as this though the image may change the format and layout is consistent uh, so that uh, the audience recognizes that there is a transitioning happening uh, from an organization standpoint of us of a slideshow i will consistently also right click and create sections uh, and give it a name so for instance this is the range of motion section and i can quickly collapse that tells me how many slides are there. And then if I wanted to, instead of copying and pasting those slides, I could actually just draw, drag a section down um, of, uh, to wherever I wanted it. Um, and and that, that's super helpful um, when I'm trying to just collapse and just work on a particular section. Or if I just wanna uh, rapidly jump, maybe I wanna like, for instance, jump down to my uh, my reference slides and I would put like a reference section so that I could just manip quickly go from this slide to my references, copy and paste the reference rather than having to scroll all the way down and then what slide was I on and then trying to find it again. Um, that's less about the road mapping for the audience. That's more about road mapping for myself. Um, so again, still that, that's all kind of just macro scale that helps with uh, the visualization and the orientation of the audience to the slideshow. When we get into slide creation, um, uh, I gave some rules of thumb um, as far as like font and, and visualization. So um, I guess the, if we look at this slide, for instance, um, I try the principles that I've utilized to, uh, with this slide have been uh, a readable font, uh, high contrast against the background uh, in regards to colors of font said, said background. I like the color of the table that is used and this stems from the theme that I've implemented for this master slide. Uh, I'm big on uh, utilizing references at the bottom of the slide with the subscript associated uh, within the slide, oftentimes I will have it as a separate color to the color that presents predominantly on the slide. In this case, it's blue, but at other times uh, I've consistently used red. I just didn't want the red on red because of the color of the table here. Um, I will also, this is, it's difficult within a table uh, to exercise this uh, guideline, but the other thing that I have previously come privy to is that animation is not just a, uh, a nice to do, but it's actually, in my opinion, a, a strategy for effective communication and to make sure that your audience is not overwhelmed by your slide. And so um, an example maybe of this would be, I don't know if I've animated uh, these enough, um, let me just find a slide. Uh, I guess I guess this would be an example. Uh, it may come back to bite me, but let's see. So these would all populate on a, uh, yeah. So let me just show this. Um, what do you see right now? I just see the foot range of motion, accessory motions. You see the slide. Yes, I don't see. I mean, I see the stuff on the side. I see the next animation. I see all your notes as well. Okay. All right. So you're, you're seeing the presenter view. Yes. Presenter view. Sorry. Right. Yeah. Uh, 
that's fine. It's going to work. So then I click and then, right. So then I would say, all right, we're going to talk about on this slide, joint play measures of the shank and rear foot. Let me orient you to this sliding scale of reliability, uh, be it uh, a Kappa weighted or an ICC, where the cool colors represent poor, the red uh, or warmer color scheme are those that are good. So that is a busy pro uh, image, but let me mm -hmm. orient you. So then, and I could use a white box uh, such that instead of just populating the entire thing, I would populate like just a section at a time, like tibio femoral, mm -hmm. tibio uh, tallow cruel, and then subtalar. In fact, I may actually do that now that I'm like playing this out for you. But um, it, and then I would, so the, the case in point is gradually using animation that follows my narrative. And then the overarching theme here is that joint play measurements have poor to fair reliability overall. We have the inter-rater and the uh, test retest reliability. So the better play here would have this image not animate itself, but actually have white boxes over it and have it have those white boxes disappear through animation, uh, presenting only portions of this over the course of the slide, right? So like my, the thing that stands out to me the most, uh, the way that I would do it would be, I would first say, the first thing that would reveal itself would be inter-rater reliability and test-retest reliability. So let, uh, again, I believe everyone in the audience member is familiar with these terms, but those who aren't, uh, inter-rater reliability is gonna be uh, that within or across two raters and then a test retest reliability is the reliability across uh, just a given test itself, suggesting uh, that it, it wouldn't otherwise change and how much variability there is uh, within a, a given uh, test, right? And so uh, then I would go through and I would uh, reveal the tibial femoral uh, rows the tallow cruel rows, and then the subtailor. And my preface would be, your goal here is not to focus on the values. Your goal here is to focus on the colors. And what is predominant uh, are like cool that. colors, right? Um, and so taking what is otherwise somewhat complex uh, and then just like uh, making it somewhat simple and then the take home message from this slide, what I hope that you gain from it is that joint play measures have poor to fair reliability overall, uh, regardless of whether you're looking at across a providers or from a, a test retest. And I actually think that there's a typo within this image where it says, I believe that the test one, tester one and tester two should actually be under the inter-rater reliability and that the baseline and reassessment should be over these columns. I think that the publisher made a mistake. But that's neither here nor there. Um, yeah, so though, so that is the, just expressing the principle of uh, in, uh, intentional animation to make me a better presenter and to tell my story more efficiently and effectively without overwhelming the audience. Um, other, th other strategies that I've seen uh, really good presenters do is instead of just providing the, uh, the reference, uh, first author and meter, is that they will actually provide the whole reference. At times, I just, for this slide in particular, right? I just use a lot of references on a given slide. And so uh, just out of necessity of space, and you could say, well, you need to manipulate it such that you're gonna, uh, you need to manipulate the slide content such that you can fit the full references. Fine, so be it. Um, I have found it as an audience member that I actually really appreciate them having the full slide on, or the full um, reference on there. Um, but at times I, I just haven't been able to follow that rule of thumb. And then I, I hesitate 
even on slides where there's only one reference to deviate from this format. I just like the consistency across slides, which I guess is another principle in and of itself, um, such that each slide is not unique uh, to the next. Uh, so that the audience member doesn't have to reorient themselves with each coming slide. Uh, the other thing that I've, uh, I also like is uh, like, I just like uh, the edge and feel uh, of boxes. So like if uh, instead of making this like no outline, I could just populate it, but there's something to be said for like having the rounded edge versus like a sharp edge versus no edge at all. And so I, that's like personal preference and what I have found, and that's uh, to be a, visually appealing to myself. Um, that's, that's all I can say for my rationale there. Um, not shown necessarily, or I guess, yeah. So then if we talk, I express the importance of media so I like simple um, and well, I'm big on like the quality of the images. These are borderline okay with me. They are somewhat blurry, uh, but acceptable. I prefer something like this where uh, I, it is like, uh, yeah. So for, for me, and this is a personal preference, I cannot stand like, like a blurry or low pixelated image on a slide. It is like someone trying to talk to me and they got a big old stain on their shirt. I just like can't listen. And so that is one thing that I'm, pri I'm privy to. Uh, the second thing is uh, when it comes to media manipulation, uh, I will consistently uh, imp try and take my own photos such as this. And I will all almost always come into picture format. I will go to color my computer's slow, sorry. Slash it's maybe freezing. Um, I will try and saturate it as much as I can without it. Looking, a good idea. Without it looking like ridiculous. So that looks ridiculous. So then I, uh, I uh, instead of the original, which uh, would look like this, I like the 200% uh, saturation. And then depending on the image, right? So again, it gets a little bit wonky with the shadow of the table there. So then I just stay at 200. The other thing that I also like doing is uh, increasing the sharpness. Again, too much of a, a, a sharpness uh, just looks funny or fake um, versus uh, like there are times I suppose where you want it to be a little bit uh, softened, um, but not in this case. It just creates it to be blurry. And then the final thing that I manipulate is the brightness and contrast and just finding the one that uh, kind of has this kind of high contrast without looking absurdly uh, filtered. And again, that's gonna depend on the lighting of the image that's taken. Yeah, so the, uh, just a summary, high pixelation if it's not your own image. The second would be the contrast, oh, it, it I suggest you do take your own image with high, with relatively good lighting and high resolution. And then when you imp do implement it, then going through with your color saturation, I usually don't touch the tone. I usually don't touch the recoloring. And then I would go into the, uh, the sharpening and the brightness. Um, yes. So uh, those are the principles there. And then the other, and, the, and these are just examples um, where I've done exactly that to get the contrast thing. And then it actually somewhat becomes a theme across the slides where they all have that kind of same look and feel, which follows the other principle of consistency. Um, other things that I would say when it comes to uh, the the media, again, these ones ha I have yet to contrast, and you can kind of see how they don't have that look, that same look and feel. Uh, the other thing that I will oftentimes do, depending on how bold I want it to be, is that I will use a, I will consistently use this outline, where it's like a simple frame uh, black, 
and it's got a, a semi shadow. And the difference there is this compared to this. And you actually can't really feel that. Yeah. So again, it just, it's subtle, but it makes a big difference. Um, and then there's one other thing that I wanted to express. That, oh yes, um, not shown. I don't believe it's shown here. I guess Mike, one, Aaron, uh, off topic, I really appreciate you doing this. I am learning a lot right now. So I really oh, appreciate this. Oh yeah. Great, Matt. Um, I'm glad that it's, that you're finding it valuable. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have a lot to process, but this is really helpful. Not okay. just for this, but for other stuff for like just stuff creation in general. Well, yeah. I mean, a lot of what you're doing right now with being a, uh, in academia is like, presentation, yeah. right. Um, and then I'm um, just trying to see if I, I guess other things that I have been doing have been uh, that I'm not really articulating um, have been like the drawing on um, mm -hmm. on images, which I, I think is um, worthwhile. Um, to like emphasize again, that just goes back to animation. Um, and like emphasizing the point that I'm trying to emphasize. The last statement was a little redundant. And then other things that I have like tried to think of is uh, when I'm trying to create like uh, a mental model or just organization of content, this would be an example. Um, so this section is postural control. So before I like launch into uh, like tests for postural control, I feel the necessity to express my mental model of postural control. Um, and this this slide will have animation where it will be white and then it will be the postural control elements, individual environment, postural task. And then I will animate the individual, the postural tasks and then the environment. Um, and then uh, one of the things that I've, you also see in this um, is like, I really appreciate when I can find icons rather than pictures um, for whatever the, the simplicity of the, the icon is so much more friendly to me. Uh, and it has like a symbolization um, to it uh, than otherwise. And the way that I find that is going by going to insert, going to icons, and then you can search uh, icons, you could search images, you could get, I, I don't know, I, I haven't done the stickers, but then I have found like uh, the videos to be helpful, the illustrations potentially also have some of that simplicity to it. Um, yeah, again, I think that people appreciate, I, 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 my bias, is that when you make things look and feel friendly and simple, i.e. icons or symbolization, that people have a perception, regardless of whether they understand it or not, but it's not nearly as intimidating. So um, that is the, the bias that I come with and the bias that I try and execute within my slides. Um, final thing that I wanted to express is with graphs or figures. Mike, do you have the, do you have this PowerPoint uploaded by the way yeah. on Teams? Or you do. Okay. I do. Yeah. Okay. I might go um, in there and grab some of the the ways you do it and okay. uh, just have the to, to have the format there as I learn and put this in there. Got it. Um yeah, so I, I don't think I have an example on this particular mm -hmm. one, but I will. Um, oops. Uh, do you still see PowerPoint? Yes, I do. Okay. Let mm, me just stop sharing. I'm going to reshare. The, the I'll just do screen one. Um, let me. So I have another PowerPoint pulled up on this other presentation that I'm uh, working on. But the. The principle here is when there's uh, figures or images, and this this is time consuming. Let me let me just like mm -hmm. level with you. Yeah, um, and that's 
trying to recreate the actual like image at hand mm-hmm. um, versus just copying and pasting like the uh, the original figure. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, and so I think that's uh, which is also nice because you don't have to worry about copyright stuff because you've made your own. You can cite the author, but you don't have to worry, which is great. Yeah, and then I will. And, and then at times when I don't have, when I choose not to do that, uh, what I will do is like, let's take, um, I don't know. I guess that first one was a, a nice example. Um, this. So let me just duplicate this slide for a sec. And so if I actually like show you what it actually like looked like, I think, yeah. Gosh. Oh, um, yeah. It looked so like. Gosh, I can't grab that. I don't know why. I want to grab the forty percent, but I can't. <laughs> um. Anyways, this is the actual like thing. Yeah. Right. Uh, so let me zoom out. So that's what it looks like. And it wouldn't, it would not be wrong to just populate that, but you can see that it's, it's much different than that. Yeah. And so then I just, uh, I, I use their color scheme. Um, and then I populated my own numbers within that versus like their 15, I made it larger. And so and if I don't want to recreate this graph in Excel, which is again, just time consuming, and I'm just trying to communicate the information. Um, uh, then that's like one strategy that I've also done consistently. Uh, it kind of mimics the, uh, I don't know if that's like kosher from a uh, copyright standpoint, but it's something that I have consistently done. And then this would be an example where, uh, yeah, I didn't actually, yeah, this is one where I actually re- recreated it myself. Um, but that that figure yeah, would that's awesome yeah okay. can I, can i make an off-topic comment okay yes. mike if you you want a passive income source why i know this is off topic it would try to require like a huge shift but like your knowledge in this area is awesome like i've learned like more than i think i can process in the last few minutes of you doing this would you ever consider going hey i'm going to teach healthcare professionals how to actually do PowerPoint or word like this. If you did this on YouTube or create a course, like this is what's going to get a lot of views. Cause if you look online, by the way, if you ever looked up like, Oh, how to do this on like PowerPoint, for example, there'd be millions of people look at this. Oh no, I had, I, I, I re- this is not common knowledge. You have some phenomenal skills and some vulnerabilities, abilities and you, the way you present it is also good. If you ever want to create a good source of passive income or really grow, like create a unique, very unique channel. I think this would be a good, I'm just throwing this out there. I think this would be awesome because this is phenomenal. Hmm. I've been in academia for two years. No one's even remotely talked about any of this stuff. And I've asked, like, well, I just do the basic, like go up and auto populate something for me instead of going, okay, how do you actually make this? How do you tell a story through images? So it's just, just a thought. For you. Oh, thanks for that, Matt. Yeah, this no, I have... really good. Like I've never, and I've seen a couple PowerPoint, like how to's it's never been this good. Well, all right. I'm serious. Um, that, that's, yeah, that's powerful testimony. Um, yeah. Cause it's also like, mm, I also feel like it's the bane of my existence. Like I'm just trying to like tell like a uh, given information, but it takes me so, I mean, it's time consuming, but yeah. we, we be real. Yeah. Uh, uh, That's okay. So you could turn the thing that you've put a lot of time into learning and you could turn that into something, go, hey, hey, here's how I can teach other people to do this and save some time. But then that gives me views and people can pay me to do that. On the cool, screen. man. All right. Um, yeah. Just thinking of this, ideas for you. I appreciate you. Yeah. 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 Um, and then, yeah, so here's a good slide where, shall we just... And I would gradually like fade. Uh, that was like a bad example. If I just show like mm. a slideshow. Yeah. 
Can you hear what's happening or no? I cannot hear. Oh, no. okay. Yeah, it's playing. It's playing audio. Okay. Okay. I can't uh, hear. It. But irrespective, that might be over Zoom. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Irrespective of it, it's uh, the fact is that these things all you can see when I hit on yeah. the animation uh, yeah. pane, all the little numbers that populate. Got it. Right. Um, and so this is again the principles at hand. Things fade in as I'm discussing them. I'm using the original image, but then I'm like putting in the axes uh, on top of that. So all these numbers here and the labels are what I've done. And then the animation on top of that to like emphasize my point of the 30% drop off of strength between ages 35 and 80. And then, oh yeah, I've also populated these dashed lines, which aren't part of the original image. Uh, to like emphasize the inflection points that occur. So there's an inflection point in strength loss at age 35, at 60, and then there's a precipitous decline as the slope changes after age 50 slash 60. Okay, I think, I believe that I'm done at this time point. I hope that was... That was great. I'm definitely going to have to review this recording a couple of times, but that was great. Okay, cool, man. I hope I can live up to this. What are you talking about? Of course you can. Okay. Uh, yeah, I guess the last thing I would recommend mm -hmm. is that mm -hmm. when you're making slideshows, um, don't have your blue light blocker on your screen oh. because then, then you get like funny, like this color scheme sucks. I mean, let's be real. And I couldn't tell that because of my the colors i had my blue light on and so <laughs> yeah some of these images are there was like one image that i saw that was really funny like this like that looks completely different if i like shut off because oh it's... yeah yeah so i'll have to go in and change that color scheme but oh my gosh <laughs> like i did not need to match the blue mask with the option to be <laughs> that's funny Sorry for the image. I'm just trying to protect my eyes, that which is yeah, more important yeah. than and the image quality that all of you are seeing right now. Yeah, no. I'll, I'll give you blue light blocker glasses as you walk into the uh, <laughs> A unique offering from this section is that they give you blue light block blockers <laughs> for the rest of the conference. Yeah. Um this is why you should have our conference first and then everybody else's last. <laughs> Okay. All right. So, uh, very good. Um, I believe that, um, I, that covers the majority of the, the key mm -hmm. principles. There may be other ones that I've forgotten, but, um, for the time being, I, I think we're yeah. good to move forward. Yeah, definitely. This, again, when I emphasize this is very helpful, not just for this, but as I'm creating my final, uh, presentation for my dissertation defense, like I'm going to be working on these things at the same time. Oh, so cool. it's good to go, okay, how do I apply, like take what you've taught and start applying this in real time and both stuff. So it should be good practice. Because I really want to keep, yeah. Like for, there's a couple slides where I'm like, I wonder, this just looks busy. Like the, obviously you're always right. The images look better. It's just creating a visual way to tell the story instead of just writing it out. That's what I'm struggling with. Cause I'm used to just saying it. And maybe that's what I need to get more confident with is going, yeah, I'm going to say it anyway. Like, Got it, man. I did make a small attempt because there's not a lot of epidemia. I, I, you know, there's a couple epidemiologic things that are out there, but there's not much. So I just, the first slide is just a slide of a cricket. And I'm like, there's not much out there. I was like, I wonder if Mike would approve of this. If it's, it's a slide, is it too simplistic? Do I need other images? Does it need like, does that tell the story correctly? Just kidding. Yeah. I mean, the only reason I've gotten good at it is because I've no. made a lot of crappy slides. That's okay. <laughs> so I'm saying you have a very good skill that you worked on. If you created a course or that did that kind of thing for like in YouTube, I think that would probably take off really well. Cool. Yeah. I don't know if I have much additional things to add. Yeah, with, what, yeah. I've already, yeah. all, what I've already laid out. Maybe it's just like a one and done, a one hit wonder. <laughs> yeah, you might. You're just like one hit, like one once a month, just like hit one for like 30 minutes and like, all right, I'm done. I'm not going to touch this, upload it. And I don't want to think about it. <laughs> Very good. Um, cool, man. Well, uh, yeah. so like if we look at the teams, 
Mm -hmm. Uh, We did outline the agenda for today. So I'm just going to refresh a bulk for that. So April meeting, we have three bullet points. Okay. One is, uh, so we, you and I both haven't completed this. Uh, the first one is completed draft of slides. Yeah. Nope. Um, worked on draft of slides is more appropriate. Yeah. Um, the second bullet point is present slides to each other. And then the third is provide constructive feedback to the person who presents or the people, you know, to each other as we present. Yeah. Um, I think that we probably, given the fact that we're, our slide decks are still under construction, yeah. it may not be necessary for us to kind of go through it in yeah. as detailed as we were otherwise planning to do. Yeah. Because um, what I'm going to show you is not going to be that much different in terms of content wise from last time. So, and okay. I still need to do the running uh, thing. Got it. Um, yeah, what I'm actually going to do, Matt, is 